Welcome to my channel. The slides that are rolling by are an indication of some of the things that I cover on a regular basis in my videos. Once you have watched the video, I would appreciate it if you would click the like button and leave a small comment. It's a really a big help to the channel. Uh, the YouTube logarithm, when it sees that, promotes the channel more and will be more viewers. I would appreciate that very much. Thank you for watching. Well, good morning, everybody. It's time for what seems to be an annual video now, where I show you what I have ordered and am patiently waiting for for this year's garden uh, from several different uh, seed and plant companies here in, um, well, three of them at least, East Coast Canada, all in Eastern Canada. And I'll go through them according to the companies rather than here, there, and everywhere. Show you what I ordered from each company. And below the video, I will put a link to each one of the companies if you're interested in going to look at what they have to offer. Um, especially if you live in Canada and want to order from them, although most of them, I guess, ship internationally as well. Some of them fairly small companies, but I've done business with them for a number of years and I'm always very satisfied with the product that I get from them. So without further ado, let's get started. I won't show you everything that I've ordered, although I think I've cut back quite a bit on what I usually order anyway, but I'll hit some of the highlights, some of the things that I think are more interesting and give you the reasoning behind ordering them. Well, the first company we'll deal with is Vessies. I've probably done business with Vessies for at least 50 years. I know they get an order from me every year. They're a very reliable company and they stand behind what they sell. If you have any problem with it, they no trouble at all, either replacing it or, or refunding your money. They sell both seeds and uh, live plants. Everything that I've ordered from them this year is just seeds. First item is radicchio, a variety called indigo. I don't believe I've ever grown radicchio before, not that I can recall anyway. But the write-up on this says it's crisp, dark red leaves add sophistication to a salad. A strong performing radicchio produces heads more reliable under wider range of conditions than other varieties, matures in 65 to 70 days. Uh, I plan to try growing it in the greenhouse in the new raised bed situation in there. If you watched my previous gardening video this winter, the soft-sided raised beds that I plan to use that are, have eight compartments in each one, um, eight feet long, three feet wide, something like that, or six feet long, three feet wide, I don't remember exactly. But I plan to grow those in there, and hopefully they uh, will withstand the temperature in there. This is something new this year with Vessies called Hampton. Uh, reminds me of the variety that I've grown in the past that I used to get from Johnny's Seeds in Maine uh, called Salanova, which is a registered, patented um, variety of, of lettuce. Comes in several different uh, shapes, but the idea is you cut the whole thing at one time and it makes a salad. You don't take a little bit here and there and it's not a hid. It's, it's just very loose when you cut it, it all comes apart. Well, I went to Johnny's to order Salanova. Johnny's has managed to tick me off. <laughs> I was trying to place an order with them and this warning came up that unless I'm a large commercial uh, farming operation, there's only two days a week that they will accept an order from me. And I said, yeah, well, I have to wait three more days before I could order my lettuce with you. You don't need my business that bad. So I moved on, and I found this at Vessi's as we're going through the Vessi's order here. It has similar growing characteristics as the Salanova. Uh, it isn't Salanova, because as I said, that's a registered, uh, copyrighted, patented item. But this sort of intrigues me. It's called a one-cut-and-done salad lettuce. Hampton is a perfect lettuce for a quick salad. 
With one easy cut, the leaves become unattached individually from each other and are ready to eat. The lettuce also stores well and provides a satisfying crunch. For a, for a whole head harvest, so hemped and eight inches apart, slow to bolt, resist tip burn, a pelletized seed, which I really like, and you don't have to try to get one or two little seeds in each pot. And there's 50 seeds in the envelope, so looking forward to trying that. Well, moving on to cucumbers, if you watched a previous video where I talked about uh, what I might grow this summer in hopes of there being a small farmer's market started here. I'm quite sure it'll probably happen and get underway. One of the items that I would like to be able to take to the market would be cucumbers. Uh, a lot of people around here do their own canning, and besides that, cucumbers just a great salad item, whatever. So I'm, I'm going to grow two varieties, both what they call parthenocarpic, uh, which means it's all female blossoms and no pollination required to produce the cucumber. Also, it's seedless. This particular variety is called Carmen. Uh, when you see it in markets here in North America, it's shrunk wrap inside of a plastic sleeve, and we always refer to them as English cucumbers. Well, Bessie's refers to them as a European greenhouse cucumber. I've grown the variety before, way back when I had my small little uh, Lexan greenhouse behind the house here. I grew them on a bench in there in the summertime and had great harvest. And then all of a sudden, one day I was down looking for something under the bench and didn't realize that one had hung down there and was growing down below the bench. The thing was almost the size of a baseball bat. I just couldn't believe it. But they are an excellent crispy um, cucumber. One of my pet peeves when I watch a cooking program or whatever and they're using this type of a cucumber in a salad, they slice it in half and then they say they're scooping out the seeds. Well, there are no seeds. What you see there that sort of seed looks seed-like, it's very soft, fleshy thing, is the female unfertilized zygote, if you will. Um, it would develop into a seed if you had a variety growing in the vicinity of it that produced both male and female uh, uh, flowers on the plant. And uh, there were pollinators about bees or whatever that brought pollen uh, from a male blossom on another plant. But no seeds in this variety. The second variety is called Quarantine, a European gherkin variety. I grew them last year and they are very prolific and as the seed catalog says they're very early as well. Uh, four inches long maybe, I don't think anything much longer than that and you can pick them as slender and thin as young as you want to pick them or let them go the size that you see here in the photograph. I did all of my pickle making last year with them and they work very well in pickles, nice and crisp and crunchy. And then I gave away, I don't know how many, but I gave away two or three bags of them to people, probably five pounds of cucumbers in each bag. So they are prolific. I don't know how many plants I grew last year, but I plan to grow a lot of them this year and in the greenhouse. And once again, something that will be uh, taken to the local farmer's market. Well, over the years, I have grown many varieties of winter squash with varying degrees of success, but winter squash are one of my favorite vegetables. I guess I've gone full circle. I'm back to growing uh, a buttercup variety, uh, probably the most popular squash here in the local area. It's about the only squash that you see here in the local stores is at least a buttercup variety, if not this particular one. This one is called Sweet Mama. It's an excellent storage kobocho type squash. I don't think I've ever grown the kobocho variety, but I have grown this before. Smooth, dark green fruit set close to the center of a semi-bush type plant. And I like that. You don't probably get as much of a yield off of a bush or semi-bush type plant, but also you haven't got to chase it through the pucker brush everywhere. Uh, mature, mature fruit will weigh three to four pounds. Flesh is thick, yellow, and sweet flavored. 
and from my recollection in the past also a dry squash which is something else that I like a really nice sweet dry squash and also they, they store quite well um, two or three months anyway if I, I start to notice some spoilage on them I always just cut them up cook them and, and freeze them and have them that way but they, they also store quite well for a few months well every year I grow a summer squash variety, usually in the zucchini classification, but I've grown yellow crookneck and all of that sort of thing too. I do use them in like stir fries and that sort of thing in the summer, but the main use that I have for them is I make a hot pepper relish at the end of the season, and the main filler in the in the relish is, is chopped zucchini. Uh, you could use also cucumber, but I find the Zucchini is easy to grow and quite prolific. This is Noche, N-O-C-H-E. It says it's a high yielding and good shelf life. Uh, big yields, easily, easy spineless picking. This hybrid plant produces a high yield of glossy dark fruit. The plant has a lack of spines and an open habit resulting in easy picking. Uh, best harvested when they're six to eight inches long. I let them grow longer than that for the relish that I make, but I do agree if you're going to be using them in a stir fry or whatever, six to eight inches long is good. And it has a long shelf life and intermediate resistance to watermelon uh, mosaic virus and zucchini mosaic virus. I don't think I've ever had a problem with either one of the viruses, but at any rate, that's this year's summer squash. I have to have a radish in the garden every year. I love radishes, just eating them fresh out of the garden or in salads. This year I'm going to grow French breakfast, which I thought I had grown before, but when I look at the photograph of how they're sort of long and, and cylinder shaped with the white tip on the end, I don't recall ever growing a radish shaped like that before, but at any rate, that is this year's radish, French breakfast radish. I always grow at least one annual flower to have for containers and putting around here, there, and everywhere in the garden. This year I'm going to grow asters. It's an annual. Uh, the variety is called Pot and Patio, a dwarf aster ideally suited for beds, borders, or patio containers. Early flowering, easily grown, a lovely mixture of colors, height, uh, 10 to 12 inches. So that uh, that takes care of this year's flowers. And last but not least from the Vessi's catalog anyway is gourds. A novelty item. Once again thinking about the farmers market. Uh, they'd be ready by fall with people thinking about fall decorations. And there's a great wide variety in this particular mix which Vessi's calls their small professional mix. And it's also what Vessi's calls their top pick. It's the one that uh, they recommend the most for growing in this particular climate, I guess. So I'll stick those in here, there, and everywhere, wherever I find room, and see what happens. Now let's move on now and have a look at uh, other items from other seed companies. Well, the next place that I've ordered from is called Corn Hill Nursery. Uh, Corn Hill is a small rural community not far from Sussex, New Brunswick. And if you know anything about New Brunswick at all, Sussex is about halfway between St. John and Moncton, New Brunswick. Well worth a visit. This year I'm only ordering raspberries from them, at least so far. I may actually make a visit up there later. Um, and I'll talk a bit about the raspberries in a minute. But it's just an incredible um, site. It's been, uh, well, I don't know, I've been going there for 30 years or more. I'm not quite sure when it got started, but they grow a fantastic amount of uh, roses that are hardy for our area, and grapes, uh, many, many grape varieties. They, they uh, have great uh, tasting times in the fall when the, when the grape crop is, is ready to harvest. But other than that, it's just amazing the other things that they that they handle. I've bought a lot of fruit trees from them and small uh, soft fruit type 
plants from them over the years and flowers and everything else. It's a, a very nice company and, and very, very friendly and once again something that stands behind what they sell. And as I said, this year I'm ordering uh, just raspberries from them, initially anyway. Last year with the pandemic, uh, I didn't go up there myself, but a friend here on the island was making a trip and notified a lot of his friends that if there was anything they wanted picked up from Corn Hill. So I did buy raspberry canes from them last year. I was so impressed with them. I have bought raspberry canes over the years from various mail order companies and you what you get is never terribly impressive and sometimes doesn't even survive. These were the healthiest, strongest, nicest looking um, canes that I'd ever seen. And if I understand from their catalog, they may not uh, actually grow them themselves. They probably bring them in from Nova Scotia. Anyway, the one that you're looking there is called Eden and it's just called a large berry with excellent flavor. I think it's one of the ones that I got last year, but I've ordered three canes of each of these varieties. And the next one is called Nova. I'm not putting up a picture. You see one raspberry, you've seen them all. And it's a very large, uh, tasty berry on stoat canes, and that's the way I would describe the canes of all of the plants that I got from them last year. Very stoat, and they took off, and have hopefully will we'll produce this year. They didn't produce last year, being their first year. And the third variety is just a numbered variety. It's also coming in from Nova Scotia, and it's called K81-6, uh, superior flavor, it says, and very large fruit. So I'm, I'm sure they know what they're talking about. Again, I probably won't see any harvest off of any of these ones this summer, but... Uh, if they grow like the ones that I got last year, there will be an excellent yield of them coming next year. Well, the next company is Annapolis Seeds, and they're in the Annapolis Valley of Nova Scotia, a really good agricultural area. I remember years ago visiting the historic gardens in Annapolis, Nova Scotia, and they can grow things there that I couldn't dream of growing here whole growing zone, I would say, uh, beyond where I live. But their seeds are all open pollinated and all organic and grown in various areas of Nova Scotia and the Maritime Provinces. Uh, a lot of them they grow themselves, but they always put a notation on the seed as to where, they, where it was collected at and who grew it. I'm cutting back dramatically on the number of tomato plants or varieties that I grow. This one is called Tumbler, and it's the only seed that I'm buying extra of this year. I, I do have lots of leftover seeds of other varieties, and I, I may end up growing a plant or two of those. But I like the sound of this one. It's an extremely early, sweet, uh, red cherry variety on a compact plant grows horizontally mostly, ideal for hanging baskets or patio gardens. The vines only grow about two feet. Well, it's a cherry and it's determinate. That uh, really interested me. I never knew there was such a thing as a determinate variety of cherries. And I will be growing them in the greenhouse in those raised beds that I just discussed a few minutes ago. And maybe one or two outside just to see how they do in a container. But it says it's their earliest tomato and they couldn't believe uh, how productive it was for the size of the plant. So that is this year's tomato purchase anyway. I may end up growing another variety or two. I've always been pleased with any of the seeds that I buy from Annapolis and I've probably been doing business with them for about 10 years at least. This particular thing is called Zamboni Rob, which is also a, a type of rapini. Um, the name intrigues me because of the, the Zamboni. The Zamboni is the thing that comes out and cleans the ice at the hockey arena and puts down a new layer of water to smooth out the ice. good friend of mine, his wife, won the lotto a um, number of years ago now, before I retired even, and several millions of dollars. She was the Zamboni driver at the local rink and really didn't want to quit her job. She loved doing it, but she felt that it just, you know, wasn't fair. The, 
she didn't need the job and somebody else who needed it should be doing it, I guess. But anyway, this is Zamboni Rob, and in their description they say, also known as Rapini, uh, this distant relative of broccoli, and then they put in the brackets, actually more closely related to turnips, uh, forms small, uh, deep green heads loaded with nutrients and flavor. Both the heads and the young leaves are eaten, and they said they like them mostly steamed or in stir-fries. I've had it, that I've, I've purchased it in grocery stores. It's always quite pricey here, and I like it very much, so I'm looking forward to giving this a try. This is perpetual spinach, which really isn't a spinach at all. It's a type of chard. I gave up on growing spinach years ago. No matter when I plant it, it grows quickly and bolts, and I don't get anything out of it. So I switched years ago to chard. I think I've grown the perpetual spinach one before. Anyway, just a nice, tasty green chard. This is called a Cossack pineapple ground cherry, something that I said I would never grow again. I grew them years ago in the greenhouse, and I was better part of a decade getting rid of them. Uh, I think some sort of a rodent, squirrel, mouse, vole, something, would harvest some of them and dig them into the soil in there, and in the spring they would pop up in great numbers everywhere. Well, I finally eradicated them, and I'm now <laughs> buying more. Plans are, if I actually get my hydroponic outdoors set up, assembled and working this summer, that I will grow them in that, a long ways from the greenhouse. So if any creature steals some, I don't think they would take them back to the greenhouse to bury them. Uh, the description says small golden fruit and uh, reminds the author here from the Annapolis Seed Company cross between pineapple, blackberry, and a tomato flavor. Well, I don't know. I've eaten them. I don't know if I actually saw any of that, but I love them. They have a very unique flavor. Uh, we call them ground cherry because they're in this little papery husk, and they're ready to harvest when they fall off the plant. So if you just go to harvest them and they're dropping off, hitting the ground, that's, that's when they're ripe and, and ready to go. Um, they're also, in other parts of the world, called a Cape Gooseberry. So that might make more sense to you in, in other areas. But I think it would be something very popular at the farmer's market if I managed to get them to grow and ripen for me. Well, the last item that we're going to talk about, anyway, from the Annapolis Seed Company is an onion, Rosa di Milano, an Italian uh, red onion. Read you what they have to say about it. Heart shaped, short season red onion, excellent fresh, thin for delicious spring onions. When mature, they're excellent in storage, keeping well into the next spring, a perfect all purpose red onion. And that intrigues me because red onions, in my opinion anyway, don't usually store all that well. But I look forward to. Uh, Trying these. We'll see what happens when we get them out in the garden this summer. Let's move on now to the last of the companies that I've ordered anything from, which is Richter's. Well, I've ordered a number of things from Vessi's. Um, most of it is pretty standard stuff. I, I ordered uh, Italian flat leaf parsley and, and uh, Genovese basil and things like that. Uh, I could easily grow them myself, but their prices are quite reasonable, and it's one less thing that I've got to try to get started in the house, and I like to have in the garden. But what's intrigued me is the item that we're going to talk about, and these are Walla Walla onions. In Canada, it is almost impossible, or at least as far as I know, it is impossible, to find onion seedlings very common thing in the U.S., most of it coming out of Texas. I hope it hasn't all frozen to death down there, the horrible weather that they're having lately. Uh, a friend over in Maine used to grow them, brought in from, from Texas, and they arrive bare root in a bundle, um, just like tiny onions, but they've already got the top started on them. You put them in your garden, and they, they're well started, and they grow very nicely. 
I have, as I said, I cannot find anything like that in, in Canada, and I don't know what these are going to be like yet. They're selling them in a 12-pack, so they will come in a growing medium, in soil, in a 12-pack. I don't know how far along they will be when they've started them or anything like that, but I'm intrigued by it, so I had to give it a try. Walla Walla is a very sweet um, salad-type onion. It's um, not at all strong, and it isn't really a, a good keeper as far as storage goes, but I would really want to try it and uh, see what happens with the first seedlings I've been able to find in Canada. Well, that, I guess, pretty much concludes my update on the things that I've ordered. I've hit the highlights here with most of the things that I've ordered. A few other things that are pretty standard I didn't bother to, to show you. And as I said before, I'll put all of the links to these various companies down below. So if you aren't already asleep, <laughs> I'll thank you very much for watching.